Hi, welcome to Top Dog Tips YouTube channel. So you found crusty scabs on your dog's back. Here's why and what to do. Discovering crusty scabs on your dog's back, especially if you do not know what caused them or how to treat them, can be upsetting or scary. A wide variety of conditions can cause these crusty scabs on a dog's skin, and I'll cover eight most common ones that could be the culprits behind crusty scabs. Before we dive in, Let's just go over a quick FAQ on when you see crusty scabs on your dog's back. So how do I treat crusty scabs on my dog's back? Make sure you don't wipe crusty scabs as this will not make them better. Instead, soften them by using either water or something like coconut oil. It should help them flake off. If the crusty scabs are bad or don't disappear easily, consult your veterinarian. Why does my dog have dry skin or scabs? There are plenty of reasons your dog may have dry skin or scabs. Some common issues include mange causing parasites or lice. When in doubt, always consult your veterinarian. What does folliculitis look like on dogs? When your dog has folliculitis, you will notice at least one lesion on his body. At first, it may just look like a slightly raised area or even appear similar to acne. Over time, the affected area could raise and turn into a pus-filled postule. What does seborrhea look like on a dog? Seborrhea tends to affect the parts of your dog's skin with a lot of sebaceous glands. It most most commonly affects the skin on the back. When your dog has seborrhea, you will spot dandruff or white flakes coming off your pooch's skin. You may also notice a unusual smell. Can I put Neosporin on my dog's scabs? If a dog has crusty scabs on its back, the application of Neosporin could help. However, use it for extremely minor scabs, cuts, or scrapes. Using Neosporin can help stop bacterial infections just like it does in humans. Additionally, your pup won't likely appreciate the taste of Neosporin, so you should prevent him from licking, biting, or scratching at the scab that you've applied the Neosporin to. Any of those actions could make it worse if they nip at it. The only caveat is to make sure your pooch doesn't lick it off. So let's dive into these common causes. Number one, allergies. Environmental allergies are abundant and can be caused by nearly anything that you can think of. While pollen is the number one environmental allergy that can cause visible signs of irritation on your dog's skin. Countless other environmental compounds can and do cause skin irritation on a dog due to the dog being allergic to it, such as laundry detergents, shampoos, soaps, cleaning products, lawn chemicals and treatments, or any chemicals. Even objects like plastic bowls could cause skin irritation in dogs, just like they can in humans. Food allergies are less common in dogs than they are in humans, and also less common than environmental allergies, but they do happen and can result in the same type of side effects appearing on your dog's skin. Pollen, as mentioned earlier, pollen is the most common allergen that impacts a dog's skin, which happens when the pollen has direct contact with the skin or it's inhaled through the dog's nose. Although it is not known why pollen allergies are among the most common ones in dogs, it's known that this allergy results in allergic dermatitis, which causes skin irritation, itchiness, rash ashes, redness, bumps, blisters, moist skin, abnormal mo odors, sores, and crusty scabs. That will cover allergies. The second type of cause of scabs on your dog's back is a bacterial infection. Superficial bacterial folliculitis is a type of bacterial infection that often results in irritation, bumps, sores, and scabs on dog skin and commonly occurs in dogs suffering from another type of skin disorder, like allergies, mange, fleas, or an injury. Bacterial infections usually develop because a dog is constantly picking at it, scratching at it, and or chewing on their skin due to the primary condition that they're suffering from. By scratching and breaking their skin open, the dogs open up their system for bacteria to get in and attack. Pus-filled sores that look like human acne can develop due to bacteria getting into a dog's system through the compromised skin and results in sores or other skin lesions. The next common cause for scabs is external parasites. The first type is fleas. They are external parasites that most commonly irritate a dog's skin, causing the dog to, again, excessively lick, scratch, or chew at their skin 
skin, which would result in sores, hot spots, or scabs. Some dogs are much more sensitive to fleas than others. You may not be able to see a single flea on your dog, but that in no way means that they aren't hiding on your dog, in their bedding, or on your carpets and rugs, and or in your yard. There are severe cases of flea infestation, and they can cause excessive blood loss, resulting in anemia, which also can lead to other parasites to enter your dog's system, such as tapeworms. Proper flea prevention and control are imperative with all kinds of dogs, or with all dog breeds. The next type of parasite is mites. They are also a widespread kind of external parasite that causes a disorder called mange in dogs that produce the same conditions that fleas do and could be even more severe. The types of mites out there are demodex mites. They survive and thrive in a dog's hair follicles, causing a disorder called demodectic mange in dogs, which can result in redness, sores, scabbing, and hair loss, but not always a ton of itchiness and is not contagious to other animals or humans. Scabies, these are less common, but are contagious to other animals and humans and could cause a disorder known as sarcoptic mange or scabies, resulting in the same kind of symptoms. The next type of parasite is ticks. Just like fleas and mites, ticks are external ones that attach to your dog's skin and feed on their blood, obviously causing the same kind of irritation that you'll see, same kind of symptoms, sores, itchiness, scabs, the works. The next cause for scabs on your dog back is a fungal infection. Examples like ringworm, also called dermophytosis, is a disorder that is caused by a fungus frequently found in soil and can result in scabs, irritated skin, bumps, scaly skin, itchiness, and hair loss. Puppies under a year of age are especially vulnerable to being infected with ringworm, and it's actually highly contagious among animals and humans. The next common cause for scabs on your dog is a hormonal imbalance. It can be caused by inherited abnormalities in a dog's testicles, ovaries, adrenal glands, thyroid glands, and or pituitary glands, and can cause your dog to lose all of their hair, which can cause skin irritation, or scabs. The other type of hormonal imbalance is endocrine abnormalities. These can cause skin irritation, just like the other symptoms, and scabs, and can be the initial stages and signs of Cushing's disease, as well as hypothyroidism and tumors, which is why it's extremely important to address any skin issues your dog is experiencing to make sure you get ahead of the curb on this one. The next common cause for scabs on your dog is is immune disorders. If a dog is suffering from any autoimmune or immune suppressing syndromes, they can develop skin conditions that can lead to sores and scabs. These skin disorders appear as a side effect of the fact that the dog's immune system is either compromised and unable to fight off the skin irritants or because the immune system is working extra hard and as a result is attacking itself, similar to humans autoimmune disease. The seventh, cause that could cause scabs on your dog is a nutritional issue. Now, lacking proper minerals and vitamins in a dog's diet can cause them to develop skin irritation, rashes, and itchiness. Obviously, these can lead to sores and scabs. When a dog's skin is properly balanced and moisturized, this provides an extra layer of defense against parasites being easily able to attach and latch onto a dog's skin and also protects the skin from being scratched or torn open by environmental environments, which happens much more easily when the skin is dry and flaky. Parasites seek and attach to unhealthy hosts. So when a dog is not being fed a well-balanced, high-quality diet that includes all the vitamins and minerals they need for proper and balanced nutrition, they become unhealthy. Parasites will often first target dogs that are suffering from nutritional deficiencies. The last cause for scabs on your dog is yeast infection. It's fairly common type of skin infection in dogs some yeast being present on a dog's skin is normal and actually necessary when it becomes a problem is when the dog develops an excessive amount of yeast. It begins to build up in warm, moist places on the dog's body, causing outbreaks of irritated, itchy, and discolored skin that can result in scabs on a dog's body due to the licking, chewing, 
and scratching. A further complication can also arise when scratching and chewing cause open wounds on the dog's skin, which causes an open arena for bacteria to enter your dog's system. Aside from those causes, we will also go over other common skin problems in dogs. Just to list off a few, alopecia or shedding, this can be due to illness, poor nutrition, or stress. Acral lick granuloma or dermatitis. This happens if your dog licks the same area repeatedly. Changes to color or texture. This can indicate a hormone or a metabolic issue. Hot spots. These are small parts of the skin that are inflamed, irritated, and red. Impetigo is a bacterial infection and it mostly affects puppies. Pups with this condition may develop pus-filled blisters. Those blisters can break before crusting over. And lastly, skin tumors. Your dog's vet will need to do a biopsy to confirm it is not cancerous. Now let's go over what to look for when spotting skin problems on your dog. So you already know that if your dog has crusty scabs, he has a skin problem of some type. Now here are some symptoms to look out for as well. Lesions, inflammation, discoloration, redness, rashes, bald patches, flakiness or dryness, as well as lumps or swelling. Now let's talk about preventative measures and what to do when your dog has crusty scabs or scabs of any kind, whether it's on their back or other areas. Number one, make sure to use antibacterial fungal dog shampoos or ointments. There are many different types, over-the-counter strength antibacterial and antifungal creams manufactured and sold commercially by many different companies and can be easily found and purchased at most large retail chains, pet stores, online retailers, as well as Amazon. Number two, make sure to keep your dog, your home, and your yard clean. Keeping these three things clean and pest infestation free is one of the most important things that pet owners can do to prevent their dogs from developing painful and potentially dangerous skin disorders. Number three, make sure to brush your dog daily. This is not necessarily possible when you have a short hair dog like mine but if you have a dog that has longer hair it's important to brush them frequently this also falls along the lines of keeping your dog clean but unlike bathing a dog which is not recommended actually to be done daily brushing them can keep their skin and coat healthy and disease and disorder free the simple act of brushing a dog not only helps remove dirt dandruff bacteria and any foreign objects or parasites that could irritate a dog's skin. Brushing a dog also helps stimulate oil glands and equally distribute all of the dog's natural oils that are essential to their overall skin health. It spreads these protective oils throughout the entire surface area of the dog's skin, their largest organ, and the first line of defense against harmful and dangerous parasites, fungi, and bacteria from entering the system. Number four, use fish oil. Essential fatty acids are essential to the health of a dog's skin and coat, as well as their diet. Give your dog fish oil capsules at least once per day with a meal or add some fish oil liquid into your dog's food to solve this problem. Number five, flea and tick collars as well as topical treatments. There are a vast amount of different companies that make a variety of flea and tick collars as well as topical or oral treatments that work to keep fleas and ticks off your dog. Before you go out and venture on these journey to pick a flea and tick collar, make sure you talk to your dog's veterinarian. That way they can point you in the right direction as far as which brand works best because I know there are some instances where people have used these kinds of collars and had problems. Number six, make sure to keep your dog on a high quality balanced diet. Now we already kind of went over this, you know, making sure that they get the right amount of nutrition. A diet that lacks essential vitamins and nutrients can dry out the dog's skin, causing the dog to itch, chew and bite themselves in response to the irritation, which they then can turn to cause the dog to rip their skin, leaving compromised areas of their skin and leaving it open to parasites, bacteria, fungal infections like we listed. Okay, number seven, use only safe, good quality grooming products. It's important to avoid cheap dog shampoo because it could often be made with cheaper, chemical ridden, irritating, and even harmful ingredients and chemicals to your dog. Make sure you consult your veterinarian. They typically 
will also point you in the right direction as far as what brands out there they trust. Or you can look online. There's plenty of people who've already done this kind of research as far as like kind of middle of the road, you know, not overpriced, but also not harmful to your dog. Number eight, make sure to try some over-the-counter medication also if that's what's prescribed. Obviously, don't just go out and get it. Make sure you see your vet and if they recommend it, one of the good ones that could help if it's just an allergy, like say for example, your dog has an allergy issue, Benadryl can be given to dogs for the same purpose as humans. This medication is beneficial to give to dogs that are having problems sleeping due to their itchiness. Number nine, again, veterinarian prescribed medication also works as well. If no other treatments work, and if your dog's skin condition is terrible and none of those solutions worked, make sure to talk to your vet. They can prescribe something and actually write a script up for them. Additionally, they can perform a bunch of different tests that can kind of help point you in the right direction on what is causing these scabs on your dog. Well, that will do it. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching and we'll talk to you soon.